G'day Frothers, welcome back. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite new bits of kit, the Edelrid Ohm 2. And of course, I'm going to be comparing it to one of my favorite bits of kit, the Edelrid Ohm 1. So I've done a couple of videos on this assisted braking sort of device before. Go check them out. I forget where it goes. But if you're not familiar with this kind of thing, basically that clips onto the first bolt of a sport route. You put your rope through there instead of a quick draw. And then as you climb, the rope feeds through, hopefully as normal. But then if you fall, it'll swing up and grab the rope. So inside here is a slot kind of like a grigri, but without the cam, it doesn't tilt. The entire device swings up like that to provide the braking. Uh, and that basically means if you've got a big climber like me, on the sharp end, they don't fall nearly as far. And if you've got a tiny belayer like Mrs. Mullet on the blunt end, what's the other end called? The belay end. They don't get yanked up against the wall and possibly injured. So the Edelrid Ohm 1 came out almost a decade ago now. This particular one, I've been using it for seven years now. As you can tell, it's pretty banged up. And then compared to the one, the two looks pretty similar. Cleaner, well, in terms of, you know, it's not as dirty, but you know, cleaner line. Cleaner design, doesn't have this big quick link on here. Uh, a little shorter as well. So if we take a closer look at them, this one opens with this latch and it only faces the one way. So you just gotta make sure that's pointing out from the wall when you're using it. And the arrows show you which way it goes up. This one, much more robust feeling uh, gate on there and this button inside, the latch on the one is all plastic. Seems like a bit of a weak point, but it's held up pretty well. The gate is really solid, no slop, it's not floppy at all. The release has this sort of ramp on there, so it's uh, easy to close. Got this nice pin detent kind of thing in there. And of course the red mark, so you can tell at a glance if it isn't closed properly. And if we look on the inside, they seem pretty much identical. I cannot tell any difference in geometry in the rope surface. Obviously this part up here, that's quite different, but the actual part where the rope goes seems identical. And if you take a look in there, you can see it's a bit polished, but oh man, like they've done such a good job with the materials there. Outdoor climbing for almost a decade and this thing has barely gotten anywhere. Look at that, this surface here, so that surface in there and that surface in there hardly anywhere at all. But the real innovation with the two, and the reason people are getting really excited, is the fact that the braking part is actually mounted on a swivel, basically so it's easier to install the correct way. The old one had this big arrows pointing up and it only faced sort of one way like a regular sport quick draw. Came with a non-locking beaner on the top, not this exact one, I, I lost the original one, but but I remember in the instructions it said don't ever turn the carabiner around in the sling. Uh, and I think why that is, is when you have a hanger like that, if you lift a quick draw up this way, it's a little easier to unclip. And since, and since this thing is designed to swing up, basically there's more risk of that kind of thing happening. Now pretty much straight away, so I don't need to worry about that. I just stuck a locker on there and I ran with a locker for many, many years. I'm sure most people did. But now the two is coming out with this swivel on here. It means it doesn't matter which way you clip or even which way the device is facing, it'll orient correctly as you climb. Now you can still install the rope the wrong way in this. Unlike the big arrows on there, this does have a little hand and it's actually pretty hard to see. I've already tried coloring it in with a permanent marker and you know, it's worn off. So maybe you want to paint it or something, but it's got the little climber side on there and the little hand side on there. It's also marked on the inside here, but you can still put the rope in the wrong way. So I've just loaded the rope in the wrong way. This is flipped upside down. Probably can't see it, but the little hand side, the belay side is up. Uh, and if I fall, it's not gonna really stay grabbing. So you do still need to make sure the rope is actually loaded in the right way. The swivel really only prevents problems from clipping this one way or the other. So coming from the ohm 
Got to admit guys, it took me forever to work out a nice intuitive way to load the rope in without just like literally staring at the symbols all the time. So I've used this for a few months now. I have worked out a kind of intuitive way to, uh, to do it without having to keep like just looking at the symbols all the time. But if it's already hanging on the wall and you're gonna be climbing past, you still gotta clip it the right way. So what you do there is you open it, making sure the gate is facing out from the wall, and then you just clip your rope in as normal. Basically, you know, if you're climbing, you basically have it pointing out and make sure you're not back clipping it like it was a quick draw. Uh, and then good to go. Now, other than that, the main functional difference between these two is the new one seems to actually break a little harder or maybe sooner. I think it grabs the rope sooner. This one, as it breaks, it's not, it doesn't have to travel in such a big arc as this one, but also having a shorter sling probably just means there's a tighter angle of the rope running through. Probably a combination of all of that, but really I think it's just breaking a little sooner because the sling is shorter. So in a fall, what happens is this one basically doesn't have to swing as far and it grabs sooner. And a few times using this, I have found the need to just extend it. You know, depending on the situation, you may want to do something like that. But the good news is that you can actually change the sling if you want. You undo this bolt here, and then as long as you apply a bit of Loctite and torque it up to the right torque, I think it's eight Newton meters, they say, should be good to go with whatever sling you want on there. So I really like these things, but of course, nothing's perfect. People do often mention that they don't like how much uh, drag this thing puts on the rope, like it's grabbing when they're not actually falling. But there's a couple of ways you can address that without just you know, ditching the device altogether. Firstly, just see what your belay is doing. If they're standing really far out or if they're keeping the rope really tight without a nice little sort of loop of, of slack, so the device is always kind of primed, it's always kind of almost locking up, just maybe get them to work on that. Also, if you've got a thick, fuzzy rope, that's gonna be grabbed a lot easier than a skinny or a smoother rope. But also, if you're a climber, maybe Maybe you find it's locking up just because you're reefing huge amounts of slack up every time you clip. Maybe consider clipping more from chest height instead of, you know, way up here. Look, I know easier said than done, but anyway, I'm not going to lecture you on that. The other thing people complain about is it just gives really hard catches. So again, you can work on your tactics using the thing. Like if your belayer is used to giving a really hard catch without the ohm, Get them to just not, <laughs> not try at all. With me and my belay partner, who is literally half my size, she doesn't jump back at all. She just stands there. The device does all the work. So there are a few technical things you can do to make the ohm work for you better. But if you straight up hate the thing, don't worry. Uh, there is another device on the market which tends to feed the rope smoother, grab the rope less suddenly. Um, and a lot of people swear by this thing. This is the Z. So shout out to Stefan up in Germany who's done a really awesome job on this thing. Some people hate the ohm and they swear by this thing. So if you think you need a rope break and you just absolutely hate, hate the green one, uh, check that guy out, it's pretty cool. So there you go, Frothers. Hopefully that's been informative for you. Any of you larger climbers out there, definitely recommend grabbing one of these, particularly if you actually like your belayer and you don't want them to get smashed against the wall all the time. And if you're looking to get your hands on any of these things or any other kind of climbing, bolting stuff, check out the How Not To store. Use the promo code in the description. You'll get a bit of a discount. Help me out too. So anyway, Frothers, thanks for watching and we'll scratch you later.